Hey, how's it going? I'm Chris with PearsonCopy.com, and I'm here to help your brands make more sales with email. As part of my 100 emails in 100 days breakdown challenge, I am breaking down an email from a brand called Hook and Gaff Watch Company. Um, this email, uh, for context, looks like it's a re-engagement email. It looks like since I've not been opening their emails or engaging with them, they are sending out uh, this offer of a 50% off. Uh, 1515 15% off to get my attention and hopefully turn me into a customer, if not um, giving to re-engage with their emails. So I wanted to break this down because um, bringing, bringing subscribers and or customers back from being disengaged um, before they go cold and they just never respond anymore. Um, this is a great uh, automation you can set up for your own brands, uh, whether you're selling um, products, uh, services, uh, or information uh, or courses or anything like that. Um, getting people to come back and re-engage with your list, uh, re-engage with your emails, re-engage with your offers. Um, it can be an automation um, and it is something that can be super valuable because you keep customers or keep prospects nearby as opposed to them leaving and never coming back again. So this is a great automation to have and I wanted to break down this email as a part. It looks like it's, this email looks like it. I'll show you the signs of why I think that. Um, but if you get this right, you can bring back a percentage of your, your disengaged people back into engage, which means you can potentially offer them uh, things to buy. So with that being said, let me go and dive in and break this down. Uh, so the email here, um, I believe this is maybe the second or third email in the sequence, um, potentially the first, I don't know. Um, but I found this, opened it, read it, and was like, oh, this looks like a re-engagement. I haven't opened or looked at your site in a while. You're, you're trying to get me back. So the subject line here is, here's an exclusive offer for you. So um, this is a definitely more general bland type subject line. It definitely has the, it's an exclusive offer. So the curiosity is, okay, it's an exclusive offer for me. Uh, what is it? So the curiosity is there. The hook is there. Um, I think you could potentially test subject lines against the 50% off over on 15% off on your next order as a, a test subject line. You could say, um, since you've been gone and reference um, a very uh, interesting, uh, or I should say uh, partially famous song, uh, since you've been gone. Um, and you could do some fun stuff with this and see if you can get people's attention because if they haven't been open to your emails, this type of subject line may or may not get you to open. Um, I opened this on purpose because I wanted to see what they're going to send me after maybe two months of not engaging. So um, just some ideas here. Always always find some different ways to test those subject lines. You can do your direct offer. You can do your curiosity hook, your benefit hook. Do a new story. You can do something like a song lyric if you know your audience listens to that type of music. Um, that's a, like a famous song or song lyric or song title that, that relates to what's in the email. Um, do something to get their attention so they'll click. So I think there's some, uh, if, if um, Hook and Gaff is not already doing it, I think you could test subject lines. Um, so the next piece here is your from name and your from email address. Um, in the other uh, dozens of videos I've done so far on breakdowns, um, this email actually could work really well as a personal email. So if, they, if the founder or CMO or CEO or somebody in the C-suite or maybe even a watchmaker, a technician, somebody um, could send a personal email, no one just does te just text saying, hey, uh, I saw that you haven't opened a lot of our emails. I wanted to reach out directly and say, hey, what's going on? How are you doing? I wanted to give you this 15% off just in case you are looking to buy. Uh, you just missed the last one. Here it is again, or here's another one. Um, that I would test that against this email directly and just do an A-B te test and split and see if the personal approach works better or if the branded um, direct offer approach works better. So um, yeah, the, the first name being from somebody at the company. Uh, so like, you know, uh, first name at uh, Hook and Gaff Watch Company. Um, that I would test into that and see what happens. Uh, so moving into the email, we have the logo here, which isn't big, so it's not intrusive and it's not uh, taking your eyes away. It gets you to scroll into the email easy. So I, I like that. Um, the one thing about this headline here, I, I, I appreciate the image. I appreciate the watch. This watch looks like, I don't know, the, the graphics here look really, really, really clean. The contrast is really nice. Um, it looks like this may have been a watch set on something and just um, Photoshopped in. Um, maybe it's because of the text behind, but this doesn't look at first glance to me, it did not look real. So I was like, Oh, what is this? And I kind of looked away from the text and looked at the watch of like, what, what's going on here? Very nice watch. Very nice watch. Um, but the graphics and the way it was set up here, I just, it took my, it took my eyes away from the messaging. Right. So something I would say about the messaging is thanks for expressing interest. So something here, I haven't opened a hooking gaff email. I would, I would roughly say less than two months, maybe two months, right? About two months. And so saying thanks for expressing interest, um, if I've forgotten who you are or I haven't been opening your emails and I see this and say, interest in what? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I remember signing up maybe and you have cool watches and I'm, I've been looking to buy a watch, but I don't really remember why, what I was expressing interest in. So this is something I would test against with this this headline here is what are, what, what do we actually address here if I'm re-engaging somebody and they haven't been opening my emails, or at least that's what my data says. What's something else we could say here to say, hey, we know you haven't been opening our emails and you did open this one. Here's why we want you like here. Here's a good reason to stay, stay, stick around and actually, you know, consider reading what we have for you or, or, or consuming what we have for you. So 
this does look like a re-engagement email. It looks like since I haven't been opening, they're going to try and get me back. I would say something to that effect. I would, I would just address it directly and test that against maybe thank you. Thanks for expressing your interest. The next one could be say, say, Hey, since you've been gone, we've had some great offers come around that you missed. We wanted to make sure you got one. Um, you could say something like, we know you haven't been opening our emails, but here's a reason why you should know. Um, something like that. Just be direct with the expression. You could do, you can do curious and, and, and clever and stuff too, and test against that. But these engagement emails, it's typically what I've seen is it's better to be direct and say, Hey, we know you haven't been opening. Here's a reason to open it. We want to bring, win you back what's going on and try to connect with them. Um, I, I've seen that work better than trying to be curious or clever or, or any kind of like funny with it. Right. But there's different ways you can do this, but I, I don't know if thanks for expressing your, your interest is close enough to the actual reason why somebody would open this after not opening for a while. Um, they're curious about the offer. So maybe start with the offer. And then after the offer say, Hey, the, here's why we're offering this. Um, the reason why is a very powerful way to use copy to, uh, get people to logically justify their emotional feeling to do something. So, Hey, there's an offer 15% off. Like, Oh, cool. I can buy a watch for 15% off. And you say, Hey, here's why you should use it. Uh, we know you have an open emails, or even if you don't want to address that, just say, Hey, here's why you should use this now. Cause you have 72 hours and we want to make sure that you get uh, the best deal possible. We know you've missed some offers because it's been a while since uh, we've sent you an email. Um, you can put it on yourself and say, we haven't sent it in a while, but now that you've opened this and we have been sending, uh, use this offer. So there's different ways you can approach this to get people in, like to stick around the email and actually click button, click on things and actually use the offers you're giving. So um, I didn't really make any notes here, but I'll just read through this real quick and uh, give you some ideas on just what I've seen here. Um, so uh, our hook and gaff watches are built for the bold and the daring. Okay. So there's your, there's their audience, right? Those who lead the charge and chase down the horizon. Now we invite you to explore a range of durable Southern design sport watches and strap on hook and gaff watch and strap on a hook and gaff watch for your next adventure. So they're inviting people to go on an adventure, right? Um, I think this is a, this is a good piece. This is a good paragraph. This is a good piece of copy here. Good asset here in this email. I think that maybe a little bit more. I see a little bit more specifics on what you use the watches for or like what kind of adventures. So if it's a Southern sport watch, what kind of adventures do people in the South take? Like where they go on? Like what are some big category of adventures you could mention? Like, you know, fishing, fishing a river or going um, ocean fishing or camping or hiking or whatever those major uh, bird hunting, something. What are those major activities or sports that you could mention um, specifically those categories of sports, but not the, the actual activity of it? and still fit the copy in this section. I think mentioning those things is going to make a deeper connection than saying chase the adventure. It's going to be like, okay, um, uh, when you go bird hunting or when you go fishing in a river or you go ocean, like um, king salmon fishing or something, whatever the thing is, like mention those categories of activities and it's going to connect, connect a little bit better, I think. Uh, but again, as always, test, 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 and test those things and see if it works better or not. Um, it's, all, it's all iteration until you figure out what works and what your audience likes. Next piece here, we have your offer. So this email is, uh, like I said, I think it's a re-engagement. This is one of the signs. Hello again. It's a 15% 15 off out of nowhere. Um, this does not mention anything about a site-wide sale or a holiday or event or anything that's like external. It's all internal. Um, so I think this is a, an automation that's set up to run if um, the subscriber doesn't engage with the email. Uh, they're trying to get a, they're trying to get some uh, in order so they can, they can get an average order value. They can actually generate money off of me as a customer. So this is a direct offer. And then hello again, again, uh, again, I think it is a sign that this is a re-engagement and it's not just a random offer that they didn't give a reason why they sent it. Um, if this is a, if this is a promo and offer and they don't have a reason why they sent it, they just said, Hey, thanks for expressing interest. And that's the reason, um, we need, I would say test into different reasons. Like what is, I mean, when they sent this, the date that they sent this, is that, a, is there a specific holiday on that event? Maybe it's a bird hunting day or something. Uh, it can be really any reason like that, but just, just for expressing interest, um, may not be as strong as something like bird hunting day or a uh, dog training day or um, camping or hiking day or whatever the activity that you mentioned, maybe in this paragraph, you could pull that in and say, Hey, here's why we're giving you 15% off today for 24 hours. It's this day. And this is why I want to give it to you because you're, you're a subscriber and we want to help you uh, pursue that adventure that you've always want to pursue. Shop on the CTA. And then you have a recommended for you section with these watches. Uh, two things came to mind here. One, these are either watches recommended because of what I viewed on their site. I did view a couple watches. So those could be, those could be these. I don't remember if they were, but these could be the, the, the watches I looked at, or these could be your most popular best sellers. So something you can do as a strategy when people first join your list is offer them your one, two, maybe three best sellers of, uh, across all products. And so you can get them into one of those, because once they buy into one of those, that's, those are going to be in specific categories. Um, and once you're in that category, you can say, oh, because of this sport fisher watch, uh, we're going to offer you a hat that goes with it. That is good for fishing, like a fishing hat, um, uh, maybe the King tide watch or, you know, different, different types of watches could suggest what kind of activity that person is going to be doing. And if you're building out your data, uh, collecting that data through your email service provider, 
um, you can start start building profiles and, and, and avatars around what are people doing with specific sets of watches. Uh, maybe a fishers, hunters, hikers, um, anything like that. Uh, they're going to buy a certain type of watch because of because they're doing those things. And now you can actually upsell and cross sell into things that fit that activity or that adventure, which means you get to know your customers way better than just um, somebody who clicked on the ad because you served it to them and it's a certain type of watch. You can actually know exactly what they're doing as their adventure. So you could also off the front end of your emails is or email automations and stuff is like ask them questions and say, hey, what kind of activities do you, if you had to pick one activity to do this weekend and it's the only one you could do for the rest of the year, which one would it be? And you can have people choose what their favorite activity is. And now once you know that, what does that mean? Well, you can sell into that activity and say, hey, if you're gonna go hunting, then here's the watch, here's the shoe, here's the hat, here's the here's the vest, here's the camping gear, here's this, that. And like, you literally can just work through getting people into the activity because of your products. So just because of that, um, these recommended products can do more than just say, these are the watches you looked at, or uh, this is the type of adventure you are, you can go way deeper. Uh, the last few pieces here, we have the menu here. It looks like it's a little off here with the alignment, not a big deal. Um, I potentially get rid of this menu entirely and just go for the recommended um, and shop now and let people go shop that way. Um, you have your logo, company name, socials, footer information, and some links here. So that's pretty much it for this email. But the breakdown, the takeaways here, one, uh, if this is a re-engagement email, I would work on getting way more specific about this headline. I would test the subject lines um, for different different types, curiosity, benefit, news, uh, maybe something funny and clever, something more direct on like, hey, you didn't open your emails, you probably should open this one. Um, something, just test those subject lines because this is an automation, so it's gonna be running to every person that gets to this point when it comes to duration of not opening emails, which means you can test a lot and you can actually dial in what works to get people to make that purchase or come back and engage. So I'd be testing these 20, I would, I would be testing these every month. I would test different subject lines. Um, I would never not test these and see if I can find the sweet spot for it. Uh, the final thing, um, again, the recommended products. If you're recommending, make sure that's based on either what somebody's already looked at, what your best sellers are, um, or if you have um, data that you can lean on, choose the certain products in this situation that would fit the outcome that you want the customer to take um, and use that data to decide which products those are. Um, let the customers tell you what they want to buy. Don't try and guess. Uh, if you don't have to guess, don't guess. To give them, like people are going to ask for something, give it to them and, and sell it to them. Um, don't try and sell them a um, Toyota Camry if they want a Ferrari, right? Like give them Ferrari. So uh, with that being said, those are the three big insights. I hope this helped. Um, I've got um, a little over 70 other videos for e-com uh, email breakdowns, blog emails, promos, uh, 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 abandoned carts, things like that. So go check those out on my YouTube channel. Uh, take away some insights there um, and then go check out my um my email revenue checklist it's in the description below in this video um, that's going to show you how i helped a company uh, a brand actually generate fifty thousand dollars per month more with email with a few tweaks a few automations a few campaigns um, that we sent out so go check that out go download that um, in the meantime thanks for watching and i hope this helped